The opinions expressed in this show are the views of the host and not necessarily that of WTRW, 94.3 The Talker, or the Bold Gold Media Group. The following presentation is brought to you by the host of the program who is solely responsible for its content. Good afternoon. Welcome to Make a Change. I'm your host, Terry Martin, along with my producer, Tom Jenkins. Hello, Terry. Hello, Tom. How are you? Very good. Today... We are welcoming a special guest, Tina Panero. And Tina is a consulting hypnotist, and she's going to explain to us today how we can not only change our mind, but we can change our life with hypnosis. And Tina, I know nothing about hypnosis. How about you, Tom? A little bit, uh, uh, just a tiny little bit. Well, I also, I'm cheating here because I've recorded with Tina for her commercials that are running on our radio station. So that is probably the extent of, of what I have learned uh, about hypnosis was sitting with Tina before and after the recording. Well, I, I think it sounds fascinating. I, I can't wait to hear everything that you want to share with us today, because whenever I see it on TV or on a movie, it just seems to get everyone's attention. It's It sounds just so very interesting. So along with what we're going to be talking about today it goes with Make a Change, our show, because from what I understand, you, you can help with maybe even job careers and maybe marriage and so many things. So let's just begin with asking you questions. And the first one I would really like to know is what motivated you in your life to become a hypnotist? Well, um, I actually had quite a bit of anxiety Um, uh, when I was a little younger. I had two small children, and I didn't have a life that was entirely stressful, Um, but there were things in my life that um, were not fulfilled. Uh, I wasn't happy in certain areas. And so uh, it caused me a lot of anxiety, and I had severe panic attacks. I couldn't go out. Um, If I went out, I would just be so anxious. And uh, I went from doctor to doctor and hospitals and all kinds of things. And um, they told me everything was fine physically, but they offered me nothing else. Um, So when I finally found out what was going on and what anxiety was, then I was... um, it was hard to find a way to control it and to... I want to interrupt you real yes, quick sure. there. Um, you, you said you found out what anxiety was. Yes. What did you figure out about anxiety? Because I And I, I asked that question because there's so many people that I talk to that seem that they're going through something in their life. And what they always end up saying to me is like, oh, well, I, I just I suffer from anxiety or I suffer from social anxiety disorder or whatever. And I mm-hmm. What did you what conclusion did you come up with on what anxiety was or is? Well, I learned more as I went along, but I'm glad you asked that because so many people have these very stressful lives and and stress we can never get away from. Right. But as long as we learn how to deal with it, um, we're fine as long as we learn coping skills. So what I didn't have were good coping skills. So it wasn't and that I you, didn't understand it. You didn't have anxiety. You didn't have coping skills. I didn't have coping skills, but I did have anxiety. Okay. And so um, with anxiety came panic attacks. So gotcha. it started that way. And could okay. I ask sure. about panic attacks? Because I think I've had panic attacks. I hear a lot of people say panic attacks. Mm-hmm. But that, sometimes you think they're actually, that you're sick. You think that there's something happening to you until you can finally say, oh, wait a minute. This is one of those ugly panic attacks coming on me again. What what would you explain what a panic attack really is? Absolutely. Um, that actually happened to me. That's why I ended up going to doctors and ultimately um, hospital rooms, emergency rooms, oh. because you get so many feelings in your body. Think you have you don't attack? understand. Absolutely. Um, uh, say shortness of breath, where you feel like something's sitting on your chest. So you think there's physical. Physically, there's something wrong with you. Um, there, there are tons of things. You could get migraines, um, uh, IBS, uh, you know, um, irritable bowel, um, just uh, uh, just Brought racing the mind. heart. Exactly, and that goes back to what Tom said. Um, what was anxiety? It was created here in my head. 
Um, it was from being unhappy, uh, from not uh, pursuing the things that I want to, suppressing feelings and things like that. So what happened was um, I found out that it was self-induced from going to all those hospital visits and sitting there and watching what ultimately happened. Like I said, nobody really was diagnosing me with anything or pushing me in the direction of getting help for my anxiety. They were saying, you're fine. But that, you know, they were saying no, physically, I'm not. yes, <laughs> physically I was fine, even though I thought there might be something physically wrong. I kept going to the hospital and it was almost a disappointment, if you will, um, that nothing was wrong because I couldn't come up with an answer. Mm. And I was actually lying in the hospital bed and watching somebody across the room that they brought in, in on a stretcher from an ambulance. And um, this woman, she her arms were flailing all over the place and kicking. And, and there were about four people around her because she was just hysterical, saying, I can't breathe, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. Um, and she was saying everything that I was thinking. I was rather low key. I, I suppressed everything. I had everything inside. And uh, she was kind of the uh, person that was letting out how I felt. So I was watching it intently. And uh, finally, what happened to me was that um, the nurse actually yelled at her, honey, if you are screaming, you are breathing, you can breathe, you're fine. And mm. for some reason, the light bulb went off. It was self-induced. It was, um, you know, you get physical manifestations of things. Um, and let me explain with anxiety. Now you have, um, you're hardwired to react to stress. Okay, so you're standing in the middle of uh, traffic and a truck is coming at you. Now, if you experience stress, and that is stress, um, your body would react. Okay, your fine motor skills would, you know, be pushed aside. Your large motor skills would then, you know, take over. You would get out of the way. Your heart would start racing. You might sweat. All the thing, all the symptoms of anxiety. So that's called fight or flight. So we're hardwired to react to stress and, you know, get something done. So that makes sense, right? So now. Um, when you have perceived stress, it, now it's not a truck that I perceived, but there was other danger. There was, you know, something inside of me that was causing the anxiety. And um, I could tell you, but then my, my ex-husband would really actually come, <laughs> come, in, <laughs> come and have a hard time, you know, give us a hard time. But, um, but you know, there were actually relationships problems and things like that, um, that were causing it, to be quite honest, and, um, you know, and, and trouble within me as well. So I was getting these reactions, these physical manifestations of the anxiety, and I didn't understand. And then once you get that, uh, it builds. Uh, you're afraid of being afraid. You're afraid of going out and having the symptoms. And it, and it's like a big snowball effect. And you get um, riddled with fear in every aspect of you, your life. You really do. You're Perf afraid of everything. You're afraid of, I started uh, having a fear of driving. Um, I was afraid to go out because I might have to use the bathroom or I might have these terrible, you know, uh, breathing attacks or you know, have to be taken away, or maybe the doctor didn't find the thing that was wrong with me the 20,000 times that I went to the doctor or the hospital, you know. So um, all of these things inside, I knew that it started here in my head and that I had to find a good way to fix it. Um, now, I was offered one thing. Um, it wasn't my regular doctor. My regular doctor was away on a ski trip, and I had gone to the people that were um, taking over for him, and they offered me um, some nice drugs, some nice... Uh, sedatives. You know, yes, Everybody. sedatives, exactly, for my anxiety. And for me, that wasn't an option. I put only healthy things in. I really didn't want to be sedated. I had two little kids, as I mentioned. And I really uh, didn't want that. That wasn't what I was looking for. So I had to be really creative. And I know this is a long answer to what you asked me. No, I'm sitting but, here shaking my yeah. head. No one can see, but I'm agreeing here. <laughs> but, um, you know, I had to be creative and 
couldn't find the ways that, um, you know, helped me. And I actually did go to a facial specialist because um, are you familiar with um, TMJ? Yes. Where you have, okay. Well, I had symptoms of that as well as everything else you could figure for anxiety. Mm hmm. And I went to a facial specialist in Manhattan, and he got it. He knew why I was there. He was a genius as far as I was concerned. Because I had already made the correlation, and I knew what was going on. But I went to see him anyway. He listened to me. He took me into his office. He said, now, what's the problem? What's going on with you? So he let me speak. Um, then he uh, validated me as a person, uh, found something nice to say about me. Um, you know, gave me some importance, um, you know, listen to me, where I, in the doctor's offices and in the emergency rooms, they did not. Um, so he listened to me. And then he gave me things to do um, to freeze the area and not experience the stress. So that was, you know, one thing that helped me quite a bit. But hypnosis was the actual thing. It taught me what anxiety was. It taught me um, what I can do for it. It taught me skills like self-hypnosis and uh, hypnosis also. Um, what actually you know. is hypnosis? Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hypnosis is actually a relaxed state of focus and attention. Instead of it being uh, something where you're unconscious, you can hear most of the time what's going on. Um, it it's kind of like having um, uh, 15 minutes of hypnosis is kind of equates to about eight hours of sleep. You feel rested. Um, you feel relaxed. You're able to change your state of mind. Uh, you're able to take it from that anxious state of mind to a relaxed state of mind where it's easy to cope with uh, things. So it's um, best experienced, you know, than explained. But um, what we do with hypnosis is we relax the conscious mind. And the conscious mind is the one that's reasoning now, hey, what is she saying here? Is this correct? Uh, you know, that's the conscious mind. The subconscious mind is um, where we house all of our automatic functions like breathing and heartbeat and things like that, all our experiences and all of our habits. So we relax the conscious mind. We speak directly to the subconscious mind. Which part of the mind controls the anxiety, the, the conscious or the subconscious? Um, you know, that is a really, really interesting question because um, the conscious mind would have the anxious thoughts, but then how we react to it would have the habits, uh, okay. um, which would be in the subconscious. So now. It's both communicating with each other, but. which creates the broken effect of the body. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the subconscious okay. mind will take the habits. So now I've created a habit of reacting to my stress in this way. And, you know, and um, and it gets worse and worse and it builds on it. And I I got some really bad habits as a result of that. And I had to undo those habits. I had to change everything that I did and learn how to relax and learn how to cope with it. So it helped with all those areas. It took a few sessions, but it did help with all of those areas. And uh, it's a skill that I learned you know, for my benefit. And then I really wanted to share it with people because my quality of a life, um, despite the fact that I loved being a mother and I had two children and I had a business, despite that fact, um, I just didn't know how to, um, to do the things that I had to do. To how to cope handle with. it all. Yeah, how to <laughs> handle it all, exactly. Mm -hmm. And the, it gave me valuable skills. I have not to this day had a panic attack ever since I learned how to do that. Well, so. we're going to take a, a real quick break here. I, and this, I'm, I'm, I don't want to take a break, <laughs> but we do have to take a break. Uh, in the studio with us today is uh, Tina Panero. A, uh, what would you, just hypn hypnotist? Or? I usually say consulting hypnotist. Consulting hypnotist. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have any questions for Tina, you want to get a hold of her, um, feel free to check out hypnosisforabetteryou.com or you can call her at 570-352-3048. I am Tom Jenkins, along with your host, Terry Martin. This is Make a Change on 94.3 FM, The Talker. We'll be right back. Confidence. It's something we all search for. It's something we all strive for. When we're confident, we feel we can accomplish anything. Think about it. When you knew you looked good, you walked with your head held a little higher. Looking people in the eye was easy. You felt like you could tackle the world. 
The first step in finding that confidence is obviously how you look. And when you look good on the outside, you feel good on the inside. Get the confidence you need with Madeira Clinicals. They're a unique skincare company that specializes in complete skincare for women and men. From anti-aging to glycolic and even a special clinical line for sensitive skin, Madeira Clinicals gives you the confidence. Make that change. Look brand new. Feel brand new with Madeira Clinicals. Check out MadeiraClinicals.com. That's M-E-D-E-R-I Clinicals.com. Or call 866-646-3374. Take on the world with Madeira Clinicals. Welcome back to Make a Change on 94.3 FM, The Talker. I am Tom Jenkins, along with your host, Terry Martin. And in the studio with us today is Tina Panero, consulting hypnotist. Did I get that right? Yes. Consulting hypnotist. And before we roll on, Tina, thank you so much for coming in and doing the show today. Oh, thank you for having me today. I, I was so excited when Terry told me that, that she got you to come and do the show. So because I, I, I love this kind of stuff. It, it fascinates me. And uh, and you were breaking this down so like an idiot like me can understand it. <laughs> um, and you had said something, you know, we, we were talking in the last segment about how you you suffered from all this anxiety and the panic and, and how the brain, your, your brain is where it all started from. You created it yourself and then you, I mean, not on purpose, obviously. No. <laughs> I think today I want to wreck myself. <laughs> but um, but then it, 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 it manifested physically on you. Yes. And uh I, I was just telling you guys during the break that a, a friend of mine many years ago suffered from a lot of the same things. And he explained to me, he goes, and for all these years, I tried to fix it myself and I couldn't. And I didn't understand why until, until he said that it's like trying to fix a broken hammer with a broken hammer. Right. It's impossible. Mm -hmm. And I, I need to, to allow somebody else with a non-broken hammer to come and fix the broken hammer. Right. It's so much easier to have somebody say it to you. Sometimes we're not really aware or we don't put it into perspective, especially if you're talking about fear. Mm -hmm. um, recently, I had a, a great young lady that had just graduated college come in and she had um, severe anxiety and she had this horrible fear of bees and she wouldn't go outside. And the family went on vacation and she couldn't go outside. Um, you know, the family was frustrated. Everybody wanted her to enjoy her life. I mean, you know, this is the beginning of life uh, straight out of college. She couldn't go outside. She couldn't enjoy herself in any way. Um, so we worked with her. It was uh, one session, actually. Um, she came in and then they listened to a recording. Uh, they listened to a CD that I make for them of the same thing. Um, because as you listen to hypnosis, you get better and better at it and you learn a little bit more. So we talked about anxiety. I explained what was going on in her body, what was going on you know, for her and what she needed to do. Then we did hypnosis. She went home, listened to the CD. Three weeks to the day later, she came in talking about how she had been at the beach she did not have, um, yeah, she did not have a fear of bees. She was outside with them. Um, she even said on the way to the beach, they had gotten out of the car to go into a store and um, there was a bee flew by. And she said, in the past, I would have gotten back in the car. We would have had to go home. Mm. But that didn't happen. So she had been on walks. She had been outside. And you're talking about the shortest period of time. She also had been in therapy, which was helpful for what she was doing. But this was something different. Her therapist actually referred her. And um, she just had such relief. And um, I was so excited to see the big difference in this young lady and her facial features and the way she was approaching life. It was totally different. Um, she knows now she needs to deal with any type of fear that comes her way. And that um, somebody that has anxiety, that um, experiences anxiety, um, learning to live with the best them, you know, um, make, making sure all of the situations are the best for you, that you stay away from stress as much as possible. You don't do the things that hurt you. Um, you know, I recommend getting the right amount of sleep and eating correctly and getting some exercise and, and you know, kind of keeping a balanced life. Um, so that when stress comes your way, when anxiety yeah, shows, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. when they show, when it shows its head, that you can deal with things a little bit better. So, so the hypnosis that you teach, or how how you 
do your consulting. Is that like what we see on TV and in the movies? How how is that? Um, make, similar. Make people cluck like chickens. And... Well, um, <laughs> only I mentioned the ex-husband. <laughs> um, uh oh. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Anyway, um, <laughs> I have to actually tell you a little story, and we'll go back to that in a minute. <laughs> I'll tell you a little story. Um, he has uh, my ex-husband. This is I'm I'm married again, and um, my ex-husband um, has this really lovely uh, girlfriend that I had met, and uh, you know we talked, and you know I enjoyed her, and she said, "Oh, what do you do?" And we got on that subject. I heard a lot about it, um, and she asked me if I would do hypnosis for her, and I was oh. very happy to. <laughs> (laughs) Yeah, I was. And um, and my ex-husband said, um, and I hope this is not a problem. Luckily, he lives a few states over. So (laughs) so um, I uh, said to him that he said, um, you know, you can't do it unless I'm in the room. And I said, no, there's one person in a room. I said, but you don't have to worry about what I do to her. But are you sure you want to come in the room with me? But that was, you know, <laughs> taking the opportunity, given the opportunity, I would have taken it. <laughs> if you anyway. could make him cook like a chicken, <laughs> that would have been the time. Uh, I've actually said this right to him, so he already knows. I don't know why, but I just had this sudden urge to give Tina all my money. <laughs> That's I, I, right. I don't know why. <laughs> you know, Tom, I would really have a lot of money if that was something I could do, okay? <laughs> Luckily, it's not not something I could do, but, um, you know, a lot of people think that you do give up your will and you don't, you know, um, and going back to your question about uh, what we see on TV, sometimes, um, you know, they take a little uh, creative license and, you know, make it look very interesting. Uh, there was one movie where uh, they opened with a hypnotist and then uh, the hypnotist induced trance and then he died and and they said he was still stuck in trance that's not something that actually happens so the movies uh tv um you know they get a little creative but that's not something that happens um we do something similar we induce trance but you can come out of it so it's not as glamorous as it looks um but it is you know similar it's to uh, make change Uh, to change something that is a bad habit or something you want to excel in, like sports or or something like that. So anyone can be hypnotized? Yeah, actually, anybody can. Um, If they have, um, you know, a regular average IQ, if it's under average, it's not very easy. But if they have an IQ that is normal or above, um, and as long as they're not uh, chemically altered with any kind of drug or alcohol, yes. And the only other, the third uh, reason you wouldn't be able to be hypnotized would be if you didn't want to be. Because it isn't something I impose on somebody. It's something they consult, you know, they, they consent to. And they say, yes, I want to be. This is for my benefit. So you can resist anything like that if you want to. You mean but if you're high strung. What if you're high strung and you can't settle down? If you're high strung, then that's my job to deal with them. Then we do um, things, you know, um, inductions, we call it, you know, um, making sure you go into trance. We do something different with somebody that's high strung and with the uh, thoughts just racing through their heads. So by talking to them, by uh, having the conversation, which is actually part of the whole thing. Um, A lot of people come in and think I'm just talking to them, but I'm listening and I'm gathering information to give them the best hypnosis experience. So the racing thoughts are important, um, but they still can be hypnotized. No no problem. What's it feel like? Um... It is very relaxed. Um, It's a little different with everybody. Everybody will come and say to me, I felt like this or I floated or, you know, um, the levels can be different uh, depending upon the day and the person. Um, But it's a very relaxed state. You aren't unconscious. You aren't asleep. Although you can go to sleep and you'd still reap the benefits because the subconscious hears. But it's just a nice, relaxed state. You end up, you know, coming out of the trance and feeling really good, feeling rested, feeling, you know, uh, relaxed. And any other suggestion I give. Yeah. Obviously, hypnosis really works because it worked for you. Yes. But how did you get into hypnosis? Like, 
Where How'd did you go? I do it? How did this happen? Um, there was actually a training uh, facility in New York, uh, where I lived at the time. And uh, the woman uh, in New York training uh, center, I believe is what it's called. And a woman named Carol Deniker in New York, um, she's an award-winning hypnotist, trained me. Um, you go through a training process, and then after that, she actually worked at a university in a, um, in a health center at one of the universities in New York. And I was able to go into that wellness center and work with people and really, you know, learn how to do it. It was really a fascinating and interesting experience working with all those people. So when, uh, when you do work on someone, do they remember everything that happens when you put them under this trance? Most of the or time, yes. You can hear, you can hear all the noises around you, um, depending upon the level again. Sometimes people just are so good at meditation or something that they just achieve this really, really deep level. And they go off somewhere and they do not hear me. Do, do any just fall asleep and you have to, and, I, and, they, and you lose them because they, they're so comfortable they fall asleep or doesn't that happen? Yes, they do fall asleep sometimes, uh, especially if I have a, an evening appointment, um, you know, and they've had a hard day. They do fall asleep. Luckily, um, we, I can, you know, bring them up a little bit um, out of that and go back into hypnosis. It actually is great to bring them out of hypnosis and go back again because you achieve a deeper level. Um, sleeping is not bad. The subconscious mind listens. And I, even when I give them a CD to go home, I tell them if you fall asleep, it's fine. But um, for the office visit, I don't really want too many people to sleep there. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I do bring them out. But yes, they do fall asleep. It's that relaxing and calming. Well, I'm yeah. sorry, but I got you off the original question. Mm -hmm. uh, do they remember everything that happens? They... Um, they do remember most of the time. Uh, sometimes it's beneficial for them not to remember, and I'll give them suggestions not to remember. Um, my husband, actually, sometimes I give him suggestions not to remember because while we're doing it, I, you know, practice some uh, bits from, like, a show. <laughs> <laughs> and so <laughs> I do. He knows, okay? <laughs> but I'll do it and um, you know, I'll tell him, you know, not to remember. But but in regular hypnosis when I have uh clients there, um sometimes it's a benefit to not remember something. Um and it's for their benefit and so I give them suggestions not to. But you hear it? I mean, they might you say it, it to you. Oh, they hear it. They hear it. But they're actually so relaxed and maybe in this very peaceful place. And I say, okay, you don't have to listen to me anymore. You can just relax. But their subconscious is listening. So they're, you know, not listening to what I'm saying, but they're getting the benefits of it. You Absolutely. You just said something a little while ago. You said if they're good at meditation, mm -hmm. it's easier to put them under in this trance. What's the difference between like this with hypnosis and maybe a guided meditation? What's the difference between hypnosis and meditation? Um, very little, actually, um, because a guided meditation would be I'd take you to a forest or something like that. And we use that um, in some of our inductions, you know, inducing trance. We do use some some things like that, some nice visualizations and, you know, guided imagery and things like that. But um, meditation in and of itself is kind of like um, just going in and uh, just being. Whereas hypnosis, you have goals, you have um, okay something that you are trying to achieve. Um, even with self-hypnosis, you might say, um, you know, I'm, I'm better at uh, golf. You know, I'll have a better, I'm not really that great at golf. So, <laughs> uh, so I'll be better at my sport or, you know, I handle stress very well. You have a goal-oriented type of experience, whereas meditation is just being and just kind of relaxing. Just getting quiet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Going inward. I'm going to take another quick break. Okay. You're listening to Make a Change on 94.3 FM, The Talker, with our guest today, consulting hypnotist Tina Panero, hypnosisforabetteryou.com, or you can give her a shout at 570-352-3048. I'm Tom Jenkins, along with your host, Terry Martin, and we will be right back. Madari Clinicals, a unique skincare company, has a complete skincare line for men and women. 
from anti-aging to glycolic and even a clinical line for sensitive skin, Medary Clinicals is for you. Their number one product? Forgiveness. It's the secret to younger looking and younger acting skin. You can experience the transformation with fewer wrinkles, firmer skin, and a more youthful, radiant complexion. Treat aging, sun damage, rosacea, and more with forgiveness. Plus, buy one bottle of forgiveness, get one lip enhancing complex for free. Forgiveness. Apply it morning and night and keep forgiving and forgetting all through the day. Make a change with Medary Clinicals. Balance, restore, look, and feel new. Medary Clinicals, a complete skincare company for men and women. Call 866 646 3374 or check out medaryclinicals.com. M E D E R I clinicals.com. Welcome back to Make a Change on 94.3 FM The Talker. I'm Terry Martin, your host, and Tom Jenkins, my producer. Before the break, well, we were talking about quite a few things, but one in particular I want to go back to. I'm stuck on that remembering everything that happens. So say you're you're talking to someone. I, I just <laughs> because it might be something I would want to do. But what if something bothers someone and they really don't know what it is? Mm-hmm. So they come to you and then they fall in this deep trance. This but you hear what mm-hmm. the problem is, and then they come up, back up out of the trance and they say, could you tell me what's wrong? Because I, I don't know, but you heard it. Mm-hmm. Does that happen? Um, mostly, you'd be surprised. Mostly everything that is bothering them comes out in the pre-talk, in the talk before hypnosis. Really? Um, yeah. It is just like this letting go of everything. They know what they're coming for. Sometimes they're surprised what they're actually there for. Um and uh, they, they might say, okay, I come for smoking, but they might just absolutely let out, you know, some negative things that happened in their lifetime. Um, one in particular was a gentleman that came in for claustrophobia, and then he let out all these things about his childhood um, uh, actually being beaten by an uncle and locked in a closet. Ooh. Yeah, okay. and um, and so um, I think there is kind of a, they're searching for an answer, and they know that there's a stress in their life, and, um, you know, they, they're trying to, to fix it, and um, it's very, um, it's something that just happens, and they let everything out. Um, as far as remembering, um, I think what you're talking about is remembering past memories, Um you know? Something that someone is so locked in, they don't even understand. They don't know. I think we probably all have something we we don't understand. Absolutely. Um, sometimes we find it beneficial to regress people, to go back to an age to find out why there was a certain fear. I had a young lady that was afraid, and, and again, in her 20s. Uh, when her parents left the house, she experienced a lot of anxiety, and she couldn't figure out why. And so we regressed her back to an age um, where it first started, and she was able to then um, give me the information about her that caused that first anxiety, and it is a very healing thing for people to remember something that they hadn't, you know, um, is something that, you know, caused that. Um, I myself had a, a big fear of dentists, and um, I didn't know why. Um, and uh, when I was in my 30s, my dentist and the hygienist actually said that they had uh, given me too much uh, of the sweet air and uh, had lost me, actually, and brought me back. So you can see how, yeah, you could see how something stored in your subconscious mind that maybe you weren't aware of could, you know, pose a problem. So as soon as they alerted me to that fact, then I was aware of that. But that certainly could have come out in hypnosis had I, you know, we looked for that answer. Why are you afraid of the dentist? We're talking with uh, consultant, consulting hypnotist <laughs> Tina Panero uh, on Make a Change here on 94.3 FM, The Talker. And uh, whenever I, you know, hear the word hypnosis, a lot of myths pop into my head. You know, it's like, hmm, 
okay, I'm going to go there. Uh, I don't know this woman uh, and I'm supposed to immediately trust her mm -hmm. because she's going to pull all of these deep, dark secrets out of me and blackmail me in the future or whatever. <laughs> what are some of the myths of hypnosis? Well, uh, the one you just mentioned is a good one. Mm -hmm. They are afraid of revealing secrets. Are they going to give me something? You're not going to reveal anything or to me. Or lose your control. Right. Or lose your control at any time. You're in control. As I said before, when you um, induce hypnosis, if you say to me, I'm not going in, then you won't. You really are in control. And I think that one of the things that I stress, um, I talk about the myths because I want people to realize that they are in control. Believe it or not, when they come to hypnosis, some of them expect me to take out my magic hypnosis wand, tap them on the head, and they're all better. Um, but then after I explain it, they understand. You make a lot of money if you had one of those I, magic yes, wands. Yes, I, I would. <laughs> um, I'm first in line. Yes, I would. <laughs> well, it is, a mag it is magical in um, the results that we get, but they have, you know, things that they have to do. Um, so I explain to them exactly what's going on. On, and their part in it and you know that they won't lose control that they are in control um, they won't reveal secrets um, they can't get stuck in hypnosis which is another one that they're very afraid of um, so dispelling the myths actually are part of the process so that they can relax to the point where they trust me and um, they understand that I'm not there doing something incorrect or I can't do anything you know, bad to them that they really are in control of the experience and can bring themselves out at any time. I make sure that they understand. Imagine going into hypnosis where it's supposed to be beneficial, but you're afraid of what could happen in the process or the outcome. And you're not going to be in a nice, relaxed state where it would be beneficial. So I'm not really doing my job if I don't dispel the myths. And and what you said before about the bank thing, boy, do I. Well, forget it. <laughs> <laughs> if I could do that, boy. <laughs> no, you never do anything against your will or your morals or anything like that. It's really a beautiful thing. Now, can hypnosis be used, um, you know, poorly or, or wrong? Um, anything can, you know. Um, if, you know, it's all a matter of opinion. But uh, for years, uh they did it for advertising. They'd leave subliminal messages mm -hmm. and all kinds of things, you know, in our commercials, um, you know, and that's not really, you know, we're not consenting to that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what I do, people are consenting to, they're asking me for it and uh, coming for the benefit of themselves for some nice change uh, for some self-improvement. So I come to you, I schedule an appointment and I come to you. What? Uh, I don't have an appointment for you. <laughs> no. Okay. Hypothetically, no. <laughs> um, what what would I be able to? What would I expect as soon as I walk through your door for the very first time? Um, well, um, I'm exactly as I am right now. Um, you know, I really love working with people. I love talking to them and explaining all of this. Uh, they'd come in uh, to the office, and you're both invited. Um, they come in and they sit in this fantastic uh, chair that reclines and it's all soft and that's where they have their experience. But first we talk. Um, they fill out some paperwork and we talk about hypnosis, exactly what we were talking about before. They, they find out about the myths. Um, I ask them to ask any questions that they're worried about, um, that they are concerned about, that would keep them from going into hypnosis. I explain what that is. Then I ask them why they're there. Um, you know, why are you here? What is your expectation of hypnosis? What are you looking to do? What are your goals? We work on, you know, what their personal goals are. Um, they actually talk about many, many things uh, having to do with it. Um, it depends on what they're there for. If it's smoking, we determine why they smoke. If it's eating, you know, what um, emotional factor, you know, makes them eat. And we go through a program. And then about a half an hour before the end, we experience hypnosis for about 20 minutes, half an hour, depending upon it. You go into a nice induction. There's beautiful soft music playing in the background. Um, we induce hypnosis uh, by whatever means is, uh, you know, necessary for that particular person. Then we talk directly to the subconscious, giving the subconscious the suggestions to make the change. 
and then they emerge from hypnosis and that's pretty much the whole thing <laughs> it's a real relaxing experience would you have to come back and do it again and again and again and again and again it depends on the person and the issue um, they're your best to determine you know what is best for you um, if it's smoking some people are there one session that's it we're done some people come back, they might have something, some reason they don't want to let go, mm -hmm. um, and they'll come back. Um, for anxiety, for instance, uh, I told you after the one session, she was wonderful, but she chose to come back. Um, she had a few things she wanted to deal with and to you know work on that were anxiety related. So we worked on the different issues. So it's, it's up to them. Um, generally speaking, one to four sessions is usually for a particular issue, usually. I always seem to go backwards, but when we were talking about the panic attacks, mm -hmm. I like what you said when we were on break about people not waiting so long to get help so that they could change. Why do we let ourselves go so long that we suffer Needless, when we could get on with our life, remember, right. maybe you want to pick up there. Well, actually, um, that's why I'm looking to, um, you know, get the information out, uh, radio, my website, um, you know, lectures and things like that. Um, I think it's because they don't know. And I think I want to make sure that people know what a benefit it could be, how it could help with change, how it could help with educating you about what you can do to make the quality of life for you better right now. As I said, um, it was debilitating. My, my, um, my anxiety was debilitating. It kept me from doing things at a time where I feel I should have been really enjoying life. I had something holding me back. And I want people to know that, um, you know, there is an outlet for that. Just like I went to those emergency rooms and I didn't receive anybody, um, anybody's help saying, here, go see this person, go see a hypnotist, go see a therapist and give me a direction to start in. There was none of that. If we there, only knew now right. what we knew then. Exactly. Or, or, Yes. yes. <laughs> yep. So late uh, in our life. Mm -hmm. well, I, I yeah, can, I absolutely. Can definitely say on my end on what would prevent me uh, in the beginning and why it would build and build and build and build and build three little words that I see just debilitate people. It's <laughs> I got this. <laughs> I got this. I think that's I, a man thing again. It, it is definitely a, no. I will agree with you. It is definitely a man thing. I have man pride, and how dare you? And and I I got this until I don't got this, and that's when I go ah oh, crap. <laughs> you know what do you think stops us from moving forward in life? Because. I, you know, you really don't realize, um, uh, as I said with anxiety about the snowball kind of effect that happens, you really don't realize, you know, you're with you every day and you don't realize um, how it's taking you from, um, you know, living your life to stopping. Um, the example of the young lady with the bees, I'm sure she didn't realize, you know, what happened until it was something that was keeping her from living, you know, myself included. All of a sudden, I'm, you know, tending to stay inside, um, not having the experiences with people that I liked, not going places and um, having terrible physical symptoms. My mind couldn't think of anything else except the anxiety symptoms. So you, you really do get caught up. Um, but we also don't um, we don't know how to relax anymore. We kind of have this real busy world and we're running from activity to activity and we don't really know how to relax. And the other thing that I stress, and this is going to probably be shocking to you, um, people don't know how to be happy. They have somebody else's opinion of their happiness but they're not pursuing their own happiness. And this causes people a great deal of stress. And eventually, you know, when you say, oh, I don't need to do this. I don't need to, you know, go. I don't have time. I don't have time to take care of myself. I don't have time to exercise. I don't have time. That's the fav my favorite thing when people come in. I said, oh, I'm sorry. You don't have time to, you know, care for yourself. You're not practicing any kind of self-love. You need to. You'll be better for the people that you're caring for. 
You know, you'll be better off. Um, you have to. It, it's what you need to do. So um, they're either very stressed and running, running, running. Um, and they're also not pursuing their own personal happiness. What makes you happy? What they, nobody. OK, nobody. At first, when I ask them what makes you happy, nobody can tell me. Nobody can tell me. They have to think a little bit. If you know, I like I could spit out right away all the things that make me happy, but I've been, you know, like pursuing this for quite a while. I can tell you right away. Um, but people are not pursuing that. They're pursuing um, making money, um, getting what they can. You know, I mean, it's harder and harder. Um, they're pursuing, uh, you know, classes for their kids or, you know, making sure they're in every activity, have everything going on. Uh, things they have to do for other people, um, you know, charity work. And these are all wonderful things, but they're leaving themselves out of the equation. And uh, when you do that, you know, you don't realize it. And then all of a sudden it's at a critical level. So um, I think... If you want to prevent yourselves from coming to see me, <laughs> um, pursue uh, some kind of relaxation, some kind of stress reduction. Really take time for yourselves. Uh, meditation um, or something that, you know, is a relaxing activity. And also do something that really makes you happy, that makes you excited, that makes you feel really good. And then you'll end up, you know, um, on the right track uh, oh. instead of you know, uh, leaving that to the side. Oh. You're listening to Make a Change on 94.3 FM, The Talker. And uh, we're talking with Tina Panero, consulting hypnotist. If uh, you have any questions, you want to learn more about Tina, give her a shout at 570-352-3048 or check out hypnosisforabetteryou.com. We're going to take a break. When we come back, I want you to answer the question, Tina, why? And we'll get more into that in just a little bit. You're listening to Make a Change on 94.3 FM, The Talker. Confidence. It's something we all search for. It's something we all strive for. When we're confident, we feel we can accomplish anything. Think about it. When you knew you looked good, you walked with your head held a little higher. Looking people in the eye was easy. You felt like you could tackle the world. The first step in finding that confidence is obviously how you look. And when you look good on the outside, you feel good on the inside. Get the confidence you need with Madeira Clinicals. They're a unique skincare company that specializes in complete skincare for women and men. From anti aging to glycolic and even a special clinical line for sensitive skin, Madeira Clinicals gives you the confidence. Make that change. Look brand new. Feel brand new with Madeira Clinicals. Check out MadeiraClinicals.com. That's M E D E R I Clinicals.com. Or call 866 646 3374. Take on the world with Madari Clinicals. And we're back on Make a Change on 94.3 FM, The Talker. Your host, Terry Martin. I am Tom Jenkins. And uh, in the studio today, consulting hypnotist Tina Panero. And this is a show all about hypnosis and uh, how we use hypnos- hypnosis to make changes in our lives. And I said before the break, I want you to answer the question, why? I kind of fibbed a little bit. I, I want to actually ask the question, is there anything hypnosis cannot help? Well, um, you know, I, that's kind of a hard question for me. I, Tom, you made me quiet. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Mark that on um, the calendar, Terry. Okay. You know, um, I guess my answer to that would be if you don't want it to work. Um, I do get those people, too. They come in telling me um, they want to do something, but they really don't want to. Mm-hmm. Um, they're... Uh, family stuck. wanted to, yeah they really are stuck they have family wanted to um you know i'm, I'm thinking about a uh, particular clients that i've had um right now um a woman came in and she did not want to let go of this habit um she was just stuck with it she wanted to smoke and her kids wanted her to stop and uh, she had lost her husband and there was a particular thing with her and smoking and her husband she didn't want to let go of and also Um, She misses him. So people do, um, you know, have this in their heads. They can come, but if they don't want to make a change, they're not making that change. They're just not willing. It's not going to happen. Right. 
the other type of person is somebody that comes to me and says they are, they are, they want to, they want to, they want to, but they won't do anything. They'll smile in my face. Uh, okay. okay. And um, I'll say to them, okay, well, you know, how's your progress? And they'll tell me, oh, you know, they'll kind of almost try to, you know, say, oh, I was busy doing this and I was busy doing that. And they have not done anything that we talked about. If you don't make the, take the steps to achieve your goal, you're not achieving your goal with me or without me, you know? <laughs> so the expectation of me walking in there, you hypnotizing me and then I'm all better, that's not a reasonable expectation. There's more steps I have to take after the fact. Absolutely. Um, you know, liable. just coming to me isn't going to make your, um, your issue uh, just resolved. You have to take action. You have there are steps you have to take, and they're pretty easy. Um, like I said before, the young lady in three weeks was different. So if you listen to the CT um, and you do the self hypnosis that I teach people to do, if you listen to what I say and listen to the steps to take that we make together, you know. If you pursue those things, you're going to move in the direction of self-improvement if you really want it. But if you don't, it's really not going to help. You, but you really have to make, you have to want it and you have to pursue it. And those, that's it. So is there a magic pill? Well, I'll tell you what. Um, if there's a magic hypnosis pill or wand, three weeks to me to go outside is fabulous, you know, from a person that couldn't leave the house. Mm -hmm. To me, that is magic. But she did make the effort. She did make the change, you know. She wanted to. I don't know how anyone else feels, but for myself, I think you have to be able to recognize that they need you. And if, if I were to look back at my life at my age now, I think I sat in a stupor many mm -hmm. times for maybe even a couple of years or several years, didn't know I was in this stupor. But I think if you, from what you're saying today, I love what you're saying, because now I would look at everything in my life and I'd say, is this a problem? Is this a problem? Because you don't have to carry it. Right. It's Absolutely. That, it really is that easy. And of course, it's make the change in your mind. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Just have to evaluate your own life. Mm-hmm. Well, anytime you make a change, um, it starts in your mind. Even if you just wanted to go to the gym, you know, I want to I want to start an exercise program. It starts with your thoughts. OK, and then it requires some action. Um, and, and you're entirely correct uh, with regard to that, um, what you were saying. You know, you don't have to live like uh, that. Um, sometimes you're not aware, but. Just even going and experiencing the relaxation, experiencing that learning self-hypnosis, and then being able to apply it in the place that you need it at that particular time is a really valuable thing. So, um, you know, I'll give lectures, I'll give uh, workshops and things like that on those topics. So people are informed. Um, I was just so going to ask really you about those workshops. Right before we mm -hmm. run out of time, yeah. Yeah, it's important. How would uh, we find out like when those workshops, where they are? Just... Um, they're all on the website um, under... Probably workshops, workshops, I believe, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's workshops. I make the website, so I should know. Um, but um, I do uh, informational ones about hypnosis. I'll do self-hypnosis workshops. I'll do stress management and things like that. And um, some of them are free and some of them are paid. But um, they're really uh, fantastic information for people. So when they get into those uh, particular spots, they can, you know, find a way to get out of that and lead a better quality of life, make that change. But you actually have training mm -hmm. uh, offers for teaching hypnosis? Um, actually, in the uh, late fall, I am going to be teaching uh, hypnosis. So uh, I will teach people how to be hypnotists. So I'm uh, just taking that training now. That's awesome. So, yeah. It's Hyp really wonderful. Hypnosisforabetteryou.com to get all of this information, also to get a hold of Tina. Tina, we're, we're slowly coming down to the end here. Um, we have gone through our entire list of questions here. <laughs> <laughs> we stole most from your webpage. Um, <laughs> what, did, what didn't we ask you that, that you would definitely want to talk about? Um, well, I think that, uh, you know, if you... Um, are looking to make a change, any change in your life, uh, look up hypnosis, find out about it. It could be used for so many things. If you want to, I mentioned golf before, excel in your sport. 
Um, it gives you focus uh, to excel in your sport. Um, it takes away some of the self-confidence issues, okay? If you want to have more self-confidence, if you have anxiety taking exams or, you know, weight issues, uh, smoking issues, um, pain management issues. Would uh, it help in career advancement? Yes, absolutely. In your job? Yes. Once we determine what the reason is, maybe you're not good at public speaking. Um, maybe you don't feel confident that you can, you know, excel in your career. Um, you know, maybe you think more people have better, uh, you know, uh, degrees or experience or things like that. We help with the confidence and maybe social anxiety or anything like that that they may have. That's whatever's holding them back. Uh, we work with so that they can move forward in their life. So career, anything. Um, research it, look it up, hypnosis in your subject, and find out about it uh, or call me, and I'd be thrilled to explain to them, you know, what the issue is and, you know, how hypnosis can help them. Best story that you can share with us being a hypnotist? Um, Whether it was the best story for you or, or for someone that you had helped? I always like... Uh, seeing um, anxiety is kind of close to me, so I always enjoy seeing people go from this, uh, you know, thoughts of anxiety to really living their life uh, fully. I have a young lady that, um, you know, uh, years ago, actually, uh, who's married now, and I follow her on Facebook, and we talk um, back and forth, uh, and she's living this wonderful life, the life that she always wanted, in the career she always wanted, married, um, you know, and she's living her life to the fullest instead of living in fear, and that's a wonderful thing. But I think that one of my favorite is a gentleman uh, who was a, an HR uh, generalist in New York that had uh, tinnitus so badly it was just ringing in his ears, and imagine he had to talk to all these people and, and things. And he was able to take that volume and lower it um, to almost uh, going away. So um, anytime, they're all my favorite, you know, mm -hmm. because I get to hear um, self-improvement things, uh, self-improvement stories, things of people finding the uh, greatness within and uh, bringing it out. So they're all really fantastic stories. And how would people get a hold of you? Ah, uh, they could go to my website, hypnosisforabetteryou.com, or they can call me uh, by calling 570-352-3048. 570-352-3048. Anything else before we wrap this up? This has been fascinating. <laughs> I am I am just, I have well, a lot of more questions for you off the air that I'm <laughs> going to talk to you about personally, but uh, mm -hmm. what did we forget? What did we leave out? Um, just, um, you know, take that first step. You know, um, make that change. Take that first step. Uh, calling, finding out about it, going on the Internet. You know, take a step. If you feel a little stuck, you're not sure what's going on, take the first step. And it doesn't even have to be me, but just make that step. Um, you know, that first step for the change. And I'll speak uh, on the male aspect. It's OK to say I need help. Yes, it's absolutely. It's OK to do that. I have quite a few male clients. It's about 50-50 you want to know the truth nice so they're all working on it <laughs> well, this has been make a change on 94.3 fm the talker with your host terry martin i'm tom jenkins and our special guest today consulting hypnotist tina panero hypnosis for a better you.com thank you so much for coming on the show today yes, and thank you for having me thank you very much and, and educating and informing tremendously and, and I, I, i'm taking a lot away from this again any questions that you have for tina hypnosis for a better you.com and of course if you have any questions for terry or you need more information on medary clinicals you can go to medary clinicals.com m-e-d-e-r-i or give terry a call at 866-646-3374 Talk to you again next time on 94.3 FM The Talker. Have a great weekend, and thanks for listening. What would you do if you had more self-confidence? How good would you feel with no more chronic pain? What would life be like if you had a better memory? How fun would life be if you didn't worry about everything? Or you could take a few strokes off your golf game. Well, you can. I'm Tina Panero, a consulting hypnotist. I know you've heard it before. Change your mind, change your life. Of course it's true, but most of you just don't know how. I struggled with anxiety. Fear and worry dominated my thoughts and limited my actions. 
Ten years ago, I began to take control of my life. Now I want to help you discover just how easy it can be. Go to hypnosisforabetteryou.com and get a free hypnosis CD and find out what hypnosis really is. And imagine how good it will feel to feel good again. 570-352-3048. On the web at hypnosisforabetteryou.com. Confidence. It's something we all search for. It's something we all strive for. When we're confident, we feel we can accomplish anything. Think about it. When you knew you looked good, you walked with your head held a little higher. Looking people in the eye was easy. You felt like you could tackle the world. The first step in finding that confidence is obviously how you look. And when you look good on the outside, you feel good on the inside. Get the confidence you need with Madeira Clinicals. They're a unique skincare company that specializes in complete skincare for women and men. From anti-aging to glycolic and even a special clinical line for sensitive skin, Madeira Clinicals gives you the confidence. Make that change. Look brand new. Feel brand new with Madeira Clinicals. Check out MadeiraClinicals.com. That's M-E-D-E-R-I Clinicals.com. Or call 866-646-3374. Take on the world with Madeira Clinicals.